Okay guys, if you've been around the channel for at least a little bit, you've probably been seeing the SE6. Now I've had this little guy for a while and I'm really starting to put it through its paces and you know, get it out, break it out. And I thought today I would do a review on it, kind of talk about what I think of the knife and whether or not it's a worthy investment. Long story short, if you don't want to watch the whole video, I would say that overall, if you are looking for a mid-sized knife that is really capable at doing so before we get into it, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the, Insta and the Instagram down in the comments section, down in the description below. Okay, let's talk about this knife. So ultimately the too long didn't read for this is if you are looking for an excellent multi-roll mid-range and mid-sized knife, I think the SE6 is very hard to go wrong with. It is really capable of doing a wide variety of tasks and overall it's a pretty phenomenal knife. Now with that being said, let's dig into it a little bit deeper. So as far as the SE6 goes, like I said, it is a really capable multi-roll knife. And in fact, it is one of my favorites to kind of compare to a more budget version of the CRK Pacific. And I think the biggest uh, things that I really do like about this knife is first and foremost, the ergonomics are very squared away. Whether you're choked up to get a really fine and precise cut and you're trying to do close up detailed work, that works very well with this knife. Or if you just choke back to the normal handle, you also have a very confident, comfortable grip. It's very well rounded. And the 3D kind of uh, modeled ones that have palm swells and a little bit greater texturing are only more comfortable than this one, but already it's a pretty darn comfortable knife. It's also a really good thickness and length, in my opinion, having just over six, a six inch blade length gives you a lot of ability to span things or span pieces of wood to baton. It also gives you a lot of capability for doing things like draw knife uh, tasks and just general purpose. Uh, it gives you a lot of blade length to do lots of things with. So aside from that, uh, its full flat grind also gives it a really good ability to do things like feather sticking with a good amount of confidence and a good amount of ease. It's certainly not hard at all to get curls rolling very well. This wood's a little bit punky and a little bit kind of rotten, so it's not the easiest. The, the curls kind of just crumble, but aside from that, um, you know, on a good solid piece of wood that has good grain, it's going to feather stick very well. In addition, that full flat grind is also going to bite really deeply. So when it comes to making things like notches, you're going to be able to craft things like V notches, square notches, latch notches very easily and do a lot of different bushcraft and or survival tasks. And I like this knife. Uh, I like the fact that you can push this knife into a wide variety of tasks. It's going to be pretty darn capable as a bushcrafting knife, albeit a little bit larger bushcrafting knife, but it's also going to be a good capable survival knife in a pinch. Uh, and it's also going to be a good capable and competent survival knife. That's why I've listed it as a kind of go-to camping knife is because it fits such a wide variety of things. I like to use it in survival practice, bushcraft practices. I like to carry it while I'm scouting and, you know, finding new locations, adventuring, exploring. Those are all uh, things that I've pushed this knife into already and continue to do. And once again, I feel confident and capable of doing that because it is such a versatile knife that has such a that has a good blade length for doing a wide variety of tasks but usually not too long or too crazy now things to mention as far as bushcrafting goes i this is not going to be the best knife for bushcrafting because it does have such a long blade length so doing some of your more up close and detailed work will be a little bit challenging if you're trying to utilize the tip because the tip is so far away from the handle but aside from that but aside from that, it's going to be pretty darn good and pretty hard to beat, uh, especially for the price range being considered. Now, the biggest downside that I do have to this knife is that it is uh, coated fully and it's kind of hard to get the spine flat and sharp 
to strike a ferro rod. In addition to that, um, this is also a differentially heat treated 1095, which is gonna be a pro and a con, because part of that means that it's very tough, very flexible, and very resilient. But at the same time too, the downside to that is you have a softer steel along the spine of the blade. So when you go to strike ferro rods, you're not going to have the same level of hard steel really scraping that ferro rod to throw excellent sparks. So that's probably the biggest downside to it, unless you decide to either, you know, sacrifice your edge to strike a ferro rod, or you want to maybe find some way to make the choil a striker, you're going to be dealing with suboptimal um, ferro rod striking with this blade, which once again, isn't the worst, and it can be gotten around by either A, using things like lighters or matches, or B, using a striker or a separate tool to strike strike a separate tool to strike your ferro rod so aside from that like i said the biggest pros that i have for this blade is that it is super comfortable super versatile and it is very much designed with survival and wilderness in mind i really do love it it's a pleasure to use and uh, it's definitely staying around in the collection i did that uh, crk pacific versus the se6 video and uh, it was just fun to break this knife out and compare it with the pacific because of how like it is to the pacific the only thing I kind of like just a little bit more is its sheath because I find that you can run this sheath you know scout style like I have it set up here so you can run it like on the small of your back and it's super convenient to carry super easy and super low profile in that regard also other cool things that having this flat sided sheath allows you to do you can strap you know survival kits pouches pockets to it and uh, make this more of a survival dedicated knife if that's the way you want to roll it uh, now, I personally don't do that just because I have things like the Pacific and the A1 that are already dedicated survival knives. So this one's kind of just more of my adventure knife and scouting knife uh, slash camp knife. But overall, it is a really fun blade and super, super excellent. Definitely would recommend it. If you are in the market for a serious mid-range survival knife, it's really hard to go wrong with. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say about the SC6. As always, God bless, and I'm out.